here tonight an ABC News investigation inside Fukushima three years after that earthquake and the tsunami that caused the meltdown. Tonight we want to show you how bad the radiation is and ask if they are doing everything they can to keep it from coming toward the United States. ABC's Cecilia Vega takes us into the hot zone. This used to be a thriving community of farms and fishing villages until March 11, 2011. Japan's largest earthquake ever, the tsunami that followed engulfed entire villages flooding the Fukushima Daiichi power plant and triggering a nuclear catastrophe. Two and a half years later, we gain rare access to examine the fallout by land and by sea to find out if Fukushima is still a threat to the rest of the world. Near the plant, a 12-mile stretch of evacuated land still teams with radiation hotspots. So this is our permit we've got to get. Locals call it the no-go zone. We can go. On the other side, ghost towns, where time just stood still. It's better work. We suit up, armed with radiation detectors to tell us when we're in danger. We go inside Fukushima's ground zero to see the unprecedented cleanup underway. Though critics are skeptical, the power plant's embattled operator, TEPCO, is up to the task. The closer we get to the ruins of the meltdown, our radiation detectors climb. We're in another hot spot. It is a serious warning. TEPCO told us we can only spend one hour inside the plant. Any more time and we risk harmful radiation exposure. Radiation right here alone, about 2,000 times higher than outside Fukushima. 1,500 highly radioactive fuel rods inside this pool. They've got to move them outside of this reactor into a safer location. It is a vital, some say dangerous, first step to shut down this plant, a process that will take 40 years. And here's what TEPCO says it's doing to block the radiation from entering the Pacific. Underneath this concrete, there's a chemical barrier that prevents the water from floating out. This, these steel tanks right here, another barrier, and that orange buoy over there is a silt fence another barrier three right here in this area alone to keep contaminated water from going into the ocean will you ever know how much contaminated water has made its way from this power plant into that ocean tepco spokesman tells me it's difficult to give an accurate number so we joined a team of scientists on the hunt for answers what they say they find radiation 1,000 times higher than before the meltdown though it's still below the legal limit for swimming and drinking. Can the damage that's been done be repaired here, or is it too late? It's not too late, he says, but Japan can't do it alone. We need help from the rest of the world. And they're not alone. We meet oceanographer and radiation expert Ken Bessler in Fukushima, where he's come to examine the fallout. The Japanese government claims radiation is contained in this small harbor outside the plant. But this team of scientists says they measured radiation leaked to Fukushima more than 70 miles away. Trace amounts of radiation have already been detected in bluefin tuna caught near California, though experts say Americans shouldn't worry. Radiation dilutes as fish migrate to the U.S. I think the fear of what's happening outside the local area is a bit exaggerated. For Americans to worry about swimming on our beaches when I can swim here to eat our fish when not too far from here the fish are safe, I think is overblown. The cleanup goes on, but what about the damage we can't see? Radiation on land and in the ocean that could be Japan's invisible enemy for generations. Cecilia Vega, ABC News, Fukushima, Japan. And by the way, we did check with some leading radiation experts here in the U.S. who tell us so far no tests on the West Coast have shown the levels of the kind of cesium radiation that would implicate radiation from Fukushima. And you can see a lot more of Cecilia Vega's reporting tonight on Nightline.